Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great YouTube video. Today we are doing part three of our mini series of wiring up a contactor to a float switch, or in this case, two float switches. So uh, this one's kind of unique because we're gonna be using the relay um, and the float switches to create a holding circuit in the relay, which allows you to use two different float switches uh, to accomplish a much wider range of pumping. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Okay, so what we've got here is uh, just a basic diagram um, of our contactor and our float switches. And uh, just to kind of highlight, so for those of you trying to do this, we figured these drawings would be helpful um, to allow you to pause the video and kind of reference it as a nice clean diagram as opposed to when we go out in the shop here in a couple minutes and actually show you this in action. So uh, basically to break it down, you've got your incoming power, outgoing power, uh, your coil on the left and right hand side here. We're jumpering uh, one side of the power to the coil to keep that powered at all times. And then the uh, power is starting by being jumpered through the float switch over to this side of the coil. But then as this float switch either, well, basically as this float switch opens up in a pump down instance, um, this float switch will open up and that power will already be energized down here um, once the contact or coil closes and sends energy through to this leg. And then this switch is actually what allows the power to be jumpered over to the coil from the pass-through side and basically creates that holding circuit and keeps that relay or contactor engaged during the operation of both float switches. So, Hopefully some of that made sense and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense when we do get out into the shop and uh, actually see it in action. So let's head that way now. All right, so here we are out in the shop. We're gonna do two float switches. Um, so we'll show you how to get that all wired up. The whole idea between using two float switches is you can have those float switches spaced way far apart and still have the system turn on and off based on the condition of both float switches. So for example, they both need to be up to turn on and they both need to be down for the system to turn off. We're gonna be using this contactor as a, basically a holding circuit relay to allow this to operate. Um, this is kind of known as a, a farmer's method or um, maybe a, a in a way, not the most professional way to accomplish this particular task, but hey, if it works, get it done. So uh, a good way to show you how to get this going um, in a double floats or two float scenario. Uh, so let's jump right in and get these wired up. All right, so to get things kick-started here, we've got uh, our incoming power from the top, which travels through the uh, contactor out to our outgoing power. And of course, whether that out power going gets out or not det is determined whether this is closed or open. Just a simple reminder, I've got the power turned off, so I'm not gonna electrocute myself. Um, so when this closes, which uh, this closes based on this coil being energized, being a 220 volt coil, it needs to see 120 volts over here and 120 volts over here, and that coil closes. And the energy passes through to, in most cases, your pump system or directly to your pump. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead with the, uh, the float switch. So this, this float switch will be our float switch that is, uh, again, in a pump down application. This float switch will be at the top and this float switch will be at the bottom or the lower float switch. So this one, make it easy, we're going to put right here and right here, if I can get it on there. And so in this situation, the energy is going to need to flow through this float switch in order to send the voltage through to the coil to pull that in. And that's very similar to how you would set this up if you wanted to run things on a single float switch, this would actually work just fine. This is exactly how you hook it up. Where things get a little bit different is the second float switch is going to be located just like this and just like this. And so what's going to happen is we're going to be, when this float switch closes the contactor initially, then the power will be coming down through this part of the coil. So this float switch will then be able to send voltage to the coil until this switch opens up. 
So let's show you that in action real quick. Okay, so we've got our tank. The water level is, um, well, let's say a, the tank is uh, pumped down once again. So this float will be up. The water level continues to rise. Then this float goes up, turns the pump system on. And finally, the water level starts to drop. This pump shuts, or this float switch shuts off. The pump continues to run until it reaches the float at the bottom of the tank and allows the system to shut off. As simple as that. All right, so that's it. It's as simple as that for wiring two individual float switches up to your contactor. Uh, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. And just a reminder, this is one video in a three-part series talking about wiring float switches up to contactors in a couple of different configurations. So stay tuned for more videos to come, and we will catch you next time.